Okay, moving on. The next tooth, tooth number 30. Lower right, first molar. So let's go over the um, anatomical structures. So let's see. So we have the mesiobuccal cusp, we have the distal buccal cusp, we have the distal cusp, we have the mesiolingual cusp, and we have the distolingual cusp. So we have five lobes. And these are our marginal grooves right here. Buckle developmental groove. The stow buckle developmental groove. Lingual developmental groove right here. Then we have the central pit, the mesial pit, the distal pit, right here. And then we have a bunch of secondary grooves and the ridges. These are our triangular ridges right here. Mesiolingual, distolingual, mesiobuccal, distobuccal, distal. These are all the triangular ridges right here. So when we look at the buccal side, we can see the buccal groove, buccal developmental groove, and then we have the distal buccal developmental groove. You can call this mesial buccal just to differentiate it. So We're going to start the way we usually start and put our wax coping on. Forget just moving around. Don't wait too long between drops. This way they don't they can fuse together well. If you do it too slow, the drops form little laminations on the inside. So in case this might be a crown, the inside you'd see little lines. So we want to move fast and move in a circle. And then wherever it's thin, we're just going to add, make sure that the wax is not too hot when we're adding to the thin spots because then it will just pull down in the middle and it will just thin out again. So once we've done that we put it back. sure that we press this down so it's all the way down. Now we do the cusp tips.
Now with the first molar we have three tips but do not divide the entire space exactly into thirds because the distal cusp is smaller than the rest of them. So you do the first two cusps on the mesial and the distal larger and then on the uh, very last cusp, the distal cusp, that's going to be a lot smaller than the other ones. If you make them exactly the same, it's going to look kind of weird. See. Two big ones in the mesial, and then the distal is a small one. Then we go to the lingual. Now remember, this is a lower, so the lingual cusps are shorter than the buccal cusps. Remember the curve of SP? and the curve of Wilson. So the occlusal plane on the lower is concave. That means it goes down like this. It's a concave. And it's concave from the occlusal also. So you have these are the high cusps and then these are the lower cusps so it kind of goes in the curve so now we do the marginal ridges make sure you kind of extend the marginal ridges all the way to the adjacent tooth because if you don't you're not going to have enough room to put the um, triangular ridges in. So, to make a decent sized fish mouth, we have to extend the marginal ridge all the way to the adjacent tooth. Here I kind of made it a little bit higher than this tooth, so we're going to have to lower this marginal ridge eventually. But first we have to make sure that those cusps line up with the rest of the teeth. So this one will probably have to move in a little bit. The distal buckle we have to move out a little bit. distal cusp maybe we can move that out a little also but you see how the marginal ridges are all the way to the adjacent teeth so then I feel that these areas are a little bit thick so we're going to heat it up a little bit and remove some of it with the instrument. This will give us ample space to put our anatomical structures. I prefer to heat it up because this way I won't crack the wax. You can just scoop the wax out. So now we have a lot more space.
Let's add a little bit more to the lingual cusps just to uh, round them out a little and give the tooth a little more shape. I feel that buccolingually it's a little bit narrow so let us move these lingual cusps a little more lingually so that the tooth itself is not quite so narrow to the buccal and the lingual areas of the tooth. We're going to make our buccal lobes. You can start either side, mesial or distal. I usually do uh, mesial, distal, or distal, mesial, and then I'll do the central lobe. This one I don't really even call a central lobe, it's more like the distobuccal lobe. And then the last lobe is the distal lobe. Just make sure you check with the lecture professor and see what the test calls for in case you get the question on the test. But as for me, I would call this the distal buccal lobe. And then this one I would call the distal lobe, since it's the distal cusp. And then we go ahead and do the uh, height of contour. In some instances you have a buccal pit right there, right at the end of the buccal developmental groove, right in this spot here where it ends. But most of the time you don't have that, you just have the buccal developmental groove and then you have the distal buccal developmental groove right here. Let's do the lingual. Now if you notice this tooth is more of a rectangular shape. It's not like the upper which is a rhomboidal or like a rhombus. Lingual, we do two lobes. A mesiolingual lobe. And the distal lingual lobe. when they come together that will give us the lingual developmental groove which breaks through the periphery of the teeth 
That's how you know it's a developmental groove. Because it divides the lobes. It divides the tooth into lobes. Okay, so we have the lingual side of the tooth and then the buccal side of the tooth and we have the fish mouth. So the next thing we do is we pop it out and we're going to fix up the margins. And the interproximals, wherever we have missing wax. Remember again, not to overbuild it, because then the tooth will pop out of the model. So, please be careful with that, but also make sure the wax only reaches the margin, not past the margin, but also not short of the margin. And if you go over the margin, like what I did here, you see right there, then we have to fix it. So we're going to fix that with an instrument. Gently scrape it. Remember, don't press too hard. If you press too hard, you will break the wax. much better off dragging the instrument more times along the surface than fewer times with more pressure so I would rather you just kind of scrape it slowly so let me show you how a uh, buckle pit might look like This is the buckle developmental groove right here. This is the distal developmental groove right there. It should say distal buckle developmental groove. <laughs> See now here is the developmental groove and the pit is right in there you see but most of the time the teeth are not that deep especially on the buckle so let's just uh, fill that in a little bit to make it look similar to the rest of the teeth This here is a little too bulky, so I'm going to shave that down a little more. <laughs> Let's 
let's straighten out that distal. A bit, and then we'll push it down. And we're also going to take this developmental groove there, I mean this uh, marginal ridge down to where the other tooth is and then we'll develop a distal groove right there or a distal spillway then we're gonna do the same with the mesial we're gonna take it down to the adjacent tooth it's also popping out a little bit so I'm going to remove a little more wax from the gingival so it doesn't get pushed out quite so much. That's better. So let's get that marginal ridge down. Make our mesial marginal groove. And now I'm going to start building up the triangular ridges. So, the first one is going to be the mesiobuckle triangular ridge. And all of these, I like them to travel towards the center of the tooth. Don't just have them go straight across like a transverse ridge kind of have them go towards the central pit and remember to make them like a um, teardrop so the bottom part of it will be wider and then you drag it up to the top towards the cusp tip and then it will give you a nice round shape almost triangular in shape you see so then we go to the distal triangular ridge there this one's going to be the smallest one most likely it won't even have a secondary groove I'm just going to put a triangular ridge right here and then we're going to move on to the lingual so the mesiolingual triangular ridge I like to go right in between the mesiobuckle and the distobuckle triangular ridge and then I'll kind of snake it around and have it join up with the mesiolingual cusp tip and that will give us a nice rounded squiggly shape and then we'll move on to the distolingual triangular ridge and that also goes toward the center and maybe a little bit toward the distal and the distal buckle triangular ridge so now we have our five triangular ridges so after this we're gonna start working on the secondary ridges if we have the room if we don't we could always make a little bit more room if you feel that you don't have enough and, and if you want to make them and then we float this together a little too much you see so now what we'll do with that is we just take the instrument and we separate them 
but make sure you try not to make the groove too straight kind of make it squiggly so that it looks natural so I, I kind of go to the mesial a little bit and then go to the distal and then back out and we do the same thing with the mesial buckle developmental groove try to go through there and not too straight and then we join with the buckle groove here and we do the same thing to the lingual developmental groove and just go right into the division between the mesial lingual and the distal lingual cusp so let's try for another little ridge in the distolingual area let's see if we can do it okay just like that then a little one right here and then we can probably squeeze one in right here on the mesiolingual cusp just like that so now we're gonna slightly puddle them in now we have to be very careful and kind of do it fast If we don't do it fast, then we're gonna give it too much time and it will melt all the places too much. So now let's uh, do a little bit of refining on the central pit here as we flown some wax in there. And just take a look at it, make sure that we're not too flat on the buckle and we're also not too flat on the lingual if we notice there's a little bit of concavity right here so we're gonna add a little bulk here and then maybe a little bulk right there do a little correction to the contact areas now we do a little bit on the distal
And there we go. Tooth number 30. Mandibular right first molar. <laughs>